Oh shit, I just spotted a fly. That wasn't one of ours, was it? Now you'll have to go and check to make sure none of ours have escaped. Don't do that again. Come on, frogs, Dad. Oh, screw the frogs. Where am I getting another praying mantis? Yeah, Dad, look, what should I do Dad, about that? what like, do frogs eat? Insects. Well, which ones? I don't freaking know. Just bring enough insects to feed 9,480 frogs for a year. And use your common sense. Little frogs like Brachycephalus didactylus from Brazil and Eulotherodactylus siberia from Cuba are only about 10 millimeters long, so they won't need as much food as a 12-inch goliath frog, will they? Where's Cuba? Jeez, Dad, let's just take one pair of frogs. That'll be enough. Oh, freaking shut up, Ham! Do you guys think that if we leave species behind to drown, they'll just appear magically later? Get out of here, both of you. Haven't you got work to do? Sham, you go and find a way to make sure that the mosquitoes don't spread any infections within the boat for an entire year. Well, has mosquito netting been invented yet? Are you kidding? Mm, okay, but before I do, Dad, did you really say 29,000 feet deep? Yes, at least! It's going to rain so much that water covers the top of the world's highest mountain, which is that high. How long is it going to rain for? 40 days and 40 nights. I don't have time okay, for this. So hold on, let me work it out then. Um, 29,000 feet. It's going to come down at the rate of 350 inches of rain per hour at every point on the planet non-stop for 40 days! Look, some of the water will come from within the ground too, okay? But still, Dad, there's less than 480 million cubic miles of water on this planet anyway, including that which is in vapour form. You're basically saying it's suddenly going to more than triple. Oh look, I don't know, maybe that mountain's less than 29,000 feet high at the moment and perhaps it will suddenly grow up afterwards or something. But, but first, while I've got you all here, new rule, everybody. From now on, every species of each animal has to be loaded in at the same time. It's what? just too... What? Dad, there are only eight of us. How are we going to oversee the loading in of every species of, say, rodent at one time? I mean, think of how long it took Shem just to load in the cat species. It was a bit like herding atheists, the way they just went off all in different yeah, directions. Dad, I had cheetahs, leopards, African golden cats, Eurasian lynxes, ocelots, jaguars, Andean mountain cats going one way, Chinese desert cats, lions, pampas cats, caracals, cougars, jungle cats, and snow leopards going another way, while the marble cats, Asian golden cats, Canadian lynxes, palace cats, servals, bobcats, tigers, rusty spotted cats, and sand cats went yet another way. It was a little bit frustrating and rather time consuming. Dad, do we have to take all those cats? Friggin' yes! How else are there going to be cougars and leopards if we only take bloody tigers? I really am surrounded by utter morons! Especially you, Japeth, with this bloody snail crisis of yours! If we don't find that missing snail species and replace the one that the unicorn trod on, Yahweh and I It was the camel, gonna... Dad, not the unicorn. I don't give a shit! We don't even have unicorns, they're not real. What do you mean we don't have unicorns? They're mythological. It's, it's a fictional animal, Dad. We're not taking <sighs> any. Fictional animal. Well, you just listen, smarty pants. When someone sits down and writes about unicorns later in Deuteronomy 33, Job 39, Numbers chapter 22 and 24, Isaiah 34 and Psalms 22, 29 and 92, are you going to call him a liar? Go and get some freaking unicorns from somewhere! Actually, no. Ham, you go and get some! Right. Two or fourteen, Dad? Ugh, what do you think? Have you ever seen an unclean unicorn? Well, have you ever seen a clean one? Why would we take 14? We're taking 14 of all the clean animals. What, for food? That's actually a very good idea. I'm quite no, 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 to, to slash their throats and burn their carcasses when we're back on dry land. Oh, yeah, of course. H hang on, does that mean we're taking seven pairs of cows? Yeah, he loves the smell of burning dead cow. What kind of deity doesn't? Well, can we just make sure they're near our one and only window since they each fart 26 gallons of methane gas every day? Mmm, Ham, speaking of gut-wrenchingly disgusting smelling things that will make this voyage like a year in an open sewer, I want you to work out how to manage and dispose of several million animals' piss and shit for a year, okay? And now while you right, do that... Right, Dad, but I'll... hold on, hold on. I've already given this shit some thought, and I wonder if perhaps this is going to be more than simply a one-man job. Why? How much poo are you expecting there to be? Well, I consult an expert source who thinks that the figure is going to be somewhere around 12 US tons of animal waste being produced daily. 12 tons a day? I think we're going to need a bigger shovel. But actually, Ham, where are you getting that figure from? It's certainly a lot of shit, but it kind of seems woefully inadequate to me. Uh, Answersingenesis.com Answersingenesis.com? Yeah. Give me that. Here. Hmm. Hmm. Hold on. It says here that they're basing that estimate upon us taking only about 16,000 pairs of animals. Are these people friggin' idiots? How do they expect there to be millions and millions of variant species on the planet anytime soon after this is all over? Dad, this is what we've been trying to tell you. It's microevolution. Whoa, 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 hold on. That sounds to me like some kind of 
theory or something. No, 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 no. It's only a theory if it involves speciation. Otherwise, it's a fact. Yeah, Dad. Basically, it's animals undergoing minor mutations across generations that eventually compound in such a way as to give rise to a huge variety of forms within kinds. Well, within what kind of time frame? Because I don't remember God saying he was happy to wait around for tens of millions of years for animal millions species Millions of years? Millions? Well, how long? Well, I'd say, I don't know, maybe five generations? Mm, maybe ten. Fifteen at the most. Are you friggin' kidding me? You're saying we take one pair of one type of bear, and within a few generations we'd have grizzly, polar, brown, giant, Tibetan blue, spectacled, sun, Asiatic, black, and panda? Well, they're all bears, Dad. It wouldn't take that long, would it? Yeah, it wouldn't take that long. What the fuck would you know? Think about it! Under ordinary circumstances, mutations due to duplication errors during meiosis or DNA replication is going to be extremely slow, isn't it? In the order of one error per 10 to 100 million bases, unless it was sped up by some sort of radiation or viruses or mutagenic chemicals, or the dysfunction of some enzyme that ordinarily helps catalyze the polymerization of deoxyribonucleotides into a DNA strand or something. And it's not as if God's going to come along and inflict mutagenic chemicals upon these animals, nor expose the planet to excessive ultraviolet radiation in the hope that he can fast-track the transition from one pair of some rodent all the way to beavers, rabbits, ferrets, long-eared, spiny-tailed squirrels, white-faced tree rats, red-bellied brucies, Wyoming pocket gophers, silver mountain voles, Peruvian vesper mice, woodchucks, Siberian chipmunks, and orange-spined hairy dwarf porcupines within a few hundred years, and then suddenly step in and slow the process back to a normal rate of change once he's got all the animals he wants, especially if there isn't adequate time for natural selective pressures to help sculpt each form of animal to adapt them for survival in certain ecosystems and geographical environments. And anyway, think of the population bottleneck, guys. Even taking two of every single animal means that every species on the planet is going to be left with practically no genetic variability to allow for adaptability and disease immunity. The offspring are going to be all inbred and the infant mortality rate will be so bad that we'll be lucky to even get to the fifth generation. So if you're suggesting reducing the animal population to pairs of only 12,000 kinds, whatever that is, how the hell is there going to be any decent mutation for natural selection to act upon at all even if it had time to? It simply will not work! There's no way in the world that the planet will be promptly populated with the range and breadth of varying species that God intends for this planet after this flood unless we take a breeding pair of every single species. And there is just no other way. <sighs> Dad, I'm going to tell you straight up. I don't like the facts that you just presented, so I'm going to completely ignore them and go on believing that taking just one breeding pair of each kind will be enough. Yeah, me too. Yeah, Dad, it's my choice what I believe, and that science of yours is getting in the way. Okay, then. I'm with you guys. What? I don't have a choice. I've just got to go along with what you're saying. But, but Dad, all those facts you just explained. So? You guys understood what I said, but you ignored it, right? Mm, completely. Totally. Well, I've got to do the same. Both of our plans are batshit crazy, but if I can't convince myself to believe this story somehow, then I might start to question other aspects of my belief in Yahweh, and I don't want to start on the slippery slope towards a meaningless, worthless, atheistic life of only believing in things that make sense. Dad, did you ever consider that what we're doing here is total bullshit historically, but actually a meaningful metaphor for something? But what could it possibly be a metaphor of? Hmm, perhaps for demonstrating how Yahweh is a mass-murdering, psychopathic, death-obsessed crybaby deity who kills everything he possibly can when he doesn't get his own way. Hmm, yeah, I see your point. Yeah, and I'm not going to admit that to myself either. So from now on, I choose to believe that Yahweh is going to just magic every problem away, and that way I can go on believing it. So what if it reads exactly like an ancient cultural fairy tale, hey? Yeah. I mean, this is a story that deals with the creator of the universe. Since when did these kinds of stories have to make a fucking ounce of sense? Oh, and just in the nick of time, too. Well, quick then, before I have a crisis of faith, start unloading all but two of the cats. You, take out all but two of the birds, two rodents, uh, two marsupials. You take out all but two of the dinosaurs. Well, we hadn't got around to loading them in yet, Dad. Remember, we didn't have any freaking room. Well, good, that saves us some time. Now, we're only going to need one kind of dog, which means we can probably take out the wolves and hyenas and all that. Um, camels and donkeys are pretty much like horses, so take them out. No, no, actually, take out the horses and leave the donkeys, because they're smaller. They can have horses and babies instead. Um, get rid of all the beers except two.